Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, يَمْحُوا اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ That He erases what He wants, He blots what He wills, and He confirms that which He wills. Now that brings about a very important question. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written everything down with Al-Qalam, with the pen, and if it's all contained in a lawh al mahfuz in the preserved tablet, and everything that was to happen has already been written down, then how is it that we have any role in altering our destiny? How is it that anything can be erased or confirmed? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about Allah al mahfuz or is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about something else? Well, the Prophet ﷺ, he clarifies that in that very hadith of Ibn Abbas عنه, that we discussed, where the Prophet ﷺ is telling him to be mindful of Allah, and he tells him that if the entire world was to gather to benefit you with something, they would not be able to benefit you with anything unless Allah has written it for you. And if they were to, to gather together to harm you with something, they could not harm you with something unless Allah has written it for you. At the end of that hadith, the Messenger وسلم, says, رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامِ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحُفِ The pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. So what the Prophet وسلم, is indicating to us is that there is more than just al-qalam, there is more than one pen, there are multiple pens. And we find this through the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Allah and the Messenger وسلم, describing to us different types of writing. So for example, there is the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes down the decree or causes the decree for the next year to be written down. And how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us that the night in which that which is to come in the next year will be written down happens to be the night that most of us are going to be doing more ibadah than we will do for the entire year. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows that to be written at a favorable time for us. And the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned hearing the pens, hearing the ringing of the pens and the unraveling of the pages as the angels were, were writing down on Laylatul Qadr, on the night of decree. And Ibn Abbas ta'ala anhu, he takes it even further. He says that everything that is to happen the next year is written down that night. Uh, if, you're, if you are going to die that night, uh, if you're going to die that year rather, it's written down. If something, you know, misfortune is going to strike you or something you've been waiting for or anticipating, it's written down that night for the previous year. Then he even says that the names of the people who are doing Hajj the next year are written down on Laylatul Qadr. And so subhanAllah, you know, Mujahid, the great scholar of tafsir, who's actually the student of Ibn Abbas ta'ala anhu, he used to be known to make special dua for Hajj on, on the Laylatul Qadr or during the last 10 nights of Ramadan because that's really when you want to be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah to grant you an accepted Hajj because it's going to be written down at some point during those last 10 nights. So you push yourself in Ramadan for Hajj. Also the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us the angel that comes to our mother's womb when, when, when we are still just four months. And he writes down the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees, which are our lifespan. So it's already been written down how long you're going to live, your date of death. SubhanAllah, before your date of birth, before you're actually born, your date of death has already been written. Think about how profound that is, how you can't, you know, you will not be able to alter that, right? Uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi mentions, he writes down as well your risk, your sustenance, meaning every single penny that you would earn, every penny that would go into your bank account, every single balance that you would ever have, it was already written before you were brought in. So don't think it's in your hands, don't think that you need to rush to do haram or do prohibited things because you know, you're going to somehow get more than what's been decreed for you. It's already been written down for you. Lastly, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Sa'id aw Shaqi. He's written down as a happy person or a deprived person. And Shaqi is the opposite of Safi, so, uh, which, which means to be full and which, we, which means to be fulfilled. So Shaqi here, the context of it is that he's deprived of goodness, he's deprived of true happiness. Uh, which is the happiness of the hereafter. And, and you know, that's something that's, that's very profound as well, that we're already written that way once we're brought into this world. So again, how do we alter that? And then Rasulullah or rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَأْ That every single day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is writing. Every single day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is decreeing. Now, where does that leave us? Then what's the point of making dua? What's the point of working? What's the point of doing anything? If it's all been written down, you know, the only thing we've established now with multiple pens and multiple papers is that's more that's being written down against us, right? Well, the Prophet ﷺ said that all of that can be changed by dua. All of that can be changed by supplication. 
Okay, the only thing that cannot be changed by virtue of supplication is a lawh al mahfuz is the preserved tablet. Because a lawh al mahfuz in its writing already takes into consideration what would have happened had you not made dua and what would happen as a result of you making dua. The records of the angels do not indicate that. So what that means is the records of the angels might say that your date of death is uh, April 1st, 2015. Okay, but then you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you do good deeds because the Prophet sallallahu he said that nothing causes the lifespan of a person to increase like his good deeds. So you do good deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes your date of death to change. Now the angels' records would be changed. Allah al-Mahfuz would already have your previously decreed date of death as well as the new date of death that came as a result of you making dua or as a result of you doing good deeds. So Allah al-Mahfuz is perfect, it already has that into consideration. The same way that, you know, by virtue of you eating or drinking, you know, you extend your life for another, for another day or by virtue of you taking this medicine, you overcome that sickness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already takes it into consideration in Allah al-Mahfuz, what would have happened had you not taken the medicine and what does happen as a result of you taking the medicine. And so dua is spiritual medicine. Okay, dua, uh, supplication is our spiritual medicine and nothing is beyond our dua. Nothing is beyond our supplication. Even when it comes to matters of the hereafter. Okay, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, my Lord, he said, oh Allah, if you have written me down amongst a su'ada, amongst the fortunate ones, then confirm that, then affirm that. And if you've written me down amongst al-ashqiyah, the deprived ones, then erase that. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is showing us that dua can change not only that which has been destined in this life, but also that which has been destined in the hereafter. And you know, on that point, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he makes a very powerful statement uh, about the nature of our dua. He says, you know, I don't even concern myself with the answer to my duas. I just concern myself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me the tawfiq, giving me the success to be able to make the dua. Because I know that if Allah has guided me to be able to make a dua, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to respond to that dua with that which is best. I already know that. I don't even need to worry about the result of it. I don't concern myself. I just say, Allahumma, I make the dua and then whatever comes after that, whether it's good in my estimation or evil in my estimation, I just accept it, alhamdulillah. Because I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a wisdom uh, to me making that dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by virtue of bringing me to a position of making dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not turn me away and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave me deprived. And subhanAllah, you know, on that note, uh, Imam ibn Ata'illah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Mata atlaqa Allah lisanaka bit talab. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows your tongue to move to ask him for something, fa'lam annahu yuridu an yu'tiyak. Know that Allah wants to give you something. If Allah gave you the success to be able to move your tongue and move your lips and say, Allahumma, know that Allah wants to give you something. Now, on top of that, it's important for us to realize that sometimes when we make dua, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us our altered destiny or, or destined things for us the way we see fit. And in that is, is, is a lack of understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge and a lack of understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and ability and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing things that you don't see. And so we need to also have that trust when we make dua that even if destiny is not altered the way that we want it to be, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing what's best for us. And our hastiness and our impatience, uh, it shows in our dua at times. And the Prophet said, Allah would answer a person's dua so long as he doesn't say, why isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answering my dua? We even see in istikhara, the very famous dua of istikhara or prayer of istikhara, uh, which is something the Prophet gave to us to ask Allah that if this is good for me, in my dunya, in my deen, in my, in my matters of the hereafter, then oh Allah, guide me to it. And if it's bad for me, then remove it from me. You know, and, and you know, you see in so many different cultures, there are different ways to deal with istikhara, like you're supposed to see some form of dream and, and colors and dreams, or you're supposed to see, uh, you know, you're, you have like an istikhara fairy that shows up under your pillow and gives you an answer or something like that. You know, everyone wants to see an answer to their istikhara. But at the end of the day, istikhara is not meant for you to get an answer. Istikhara, 
What it's meant to be is that you have decided that something is best for you in regards to your dunya, in regards to your deen, in regards to your akhirah. So it's best for you in this world and the hereafter, in your estimation. And after doing istishara, as an Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah says, shura, istishara is asking other people for advice. You do istikhara of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now for the ultimate guidance in that. So I've had someone come to me, for example, one time and say, you know, Shaykh, I don't want to do istikhara for this girl that I want to marry because I don't want Allah to take her away from me if she's bad for me. <laughs> and I said, you know, you're, be careful what you wish for, buddy. You know, that might not turn out to be the best sister for you. Uh, you know, so it's better you make that dua al istikhara and just deal with the consequences, whether it's, whether it's good in your estimation or bad in your estimation. It's better you cry for a day than cry for a lifetime. So Allah knows how to respond to your duas and Allah knows how to alter your destiny um, accordingly. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always plans in the favor of the believer. He always plans in the favor of his servant. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to hear your voice. And so that's why Allah commands you to make dua and say, Allahumma, oh Allah, and destiny can be changed. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all that is in our favor is confirmed and all that is against us is erased.